Joining us now is OGOP with stories trending around the world. Hello, Genix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you? I'm doing excellent. The lady in black. The yes, we're doing Antonio. black together. I'm actually jealous yeah. you're all wearing your puppies today. <laughs> I wish I had mine. I forgot it at home. Oh, you've been wearing yours all this morning. Yes, I've been a... <laughs> you've been a true. Thank you, yeah. thank you. How are you this morning? How was your weekend? It's all right. Tindu, yeah, you look it's lovely. It's so do you, thank as you. usual. Thank you, and I love your hair. Thank you. Well, good morning oh, you. Oh, you noticed too? Yes, I, I was the first to notice. <laughs> <laughs> well I done. Well done. <laughs> so, so proud of you. The very first, Dr. So Abati. <laughs> good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Good morning to you, viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United Kingdom, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, made a touching tribute to her late mother-in-law, Princess Diana, with her new portrait in celebration of her 40th birthday on Sunday, January 9th. The Duchess delighted millions of her royal fans with the stunning photo taken by fashion photographer Paolo Rovasi when it was shared on her social media. The photo is one of three new portraits which will enter the permanent collection of the National Portrait Gallery. In Pakistan, crowds gathered for a funeral in the city of Rawalpindi on Sunday to honor some of the victims who were stuck in their cars during a heavy snowstorm that left 22 people dead. More than four feet of snow fell over the weekend, causing hundreds of vehicles to become buried. According to authorities, most of the victims suffered hypothermia as temperatures fell to minus eight degrees Celsius. Under sports, tennis superstar Novak Djokovic has been released from immigration detention after a judge in an Australian circuit court quashed his visa cancellation and ordered the government to pay his legal fees. The government's lawyer told the judge after the ruling that the Minister for Immigration, Citizenship, Migrant Services and Multicultural Affairs will consider whether to exercise a personal power of cancellation. Under entertainment, embattled actor Alec Baldwin has denied claims that he wasn't cooperating with authorities in their investigation into the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the film Rost. In a video posted on his Instagram over the weekend, Baldwin said any suggestion that he is not complying with the search warrant issued for his cell phone is a lie. And tributes continue to pour in for groundbreaking actor Sidney Poitier, who died over the weekend at the age of 94. Poitier was the first black winner of the Academy Awards for his role in Lilies of the Field, and he inspired a generation during the civil rights movement. The members of the Academy, for all of them, all I can say is a very special thank you. Finally, the Hollywood Press Association announced the winners of the 2022 Golden Globes via Twitter on Sunday night, with no media in attendance or celebrities walking the red carpet. The awards body has been embroiled in scandals since the 2021 show when it was revealed that the body had no black members and participated in questionable business practices. Well, Tundra, I was saying to you, uh, you were saying actually that you're glad that the Golden Globes is going through this, but can you imagine that they announced the, the winners via Twitter? Yes. No studio wants to work with them anymore. Nobody. I mean, Tom Cruise returned three of his awards. Very Scarlett good. Johansson says she was going to boycott them. I mean, and then they had Snoop Dogg announce their nominees. And that he was... He could have been <laughs> They had to go to Snoop Dogg because I no mean, movie star would no, do it. No. But Scarlett Johansson, I'm sorry, I saw one of the, the incidents that she referred to. She was with one of her co-stars in The Avengers, I believe it was Chris Hemsworth, mm -hmm. and she was asked about her diet, how she dieted to fit into her costume. And he was asked about his character development. It's so sexist. Very sexist. Really, really so sexist. I completely get it. And yeah. then, you know, the chairman of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association 
said the Black Lives Matter movement is a nasty racist thing. So he got fired. And this is one yeah. of the biggest issues. They had 87 members. Oh, wow. No black journalists. And then also the corruption. They yes. were sort of using it as some kind of personal slush fund. <laughs> <laughs> it was just badly run. Yeah. And they, they, they have to, you know, go through this, yeah. unfortunately. They have to. Yeah. And it's and a great it's I mean, let's call them Yeah, they're racist. Yeah. I thought we've passed this. I mean, C.D. Potier won, won an Oscar yeah, in 64. 64. A long time ago. Uh, Dorothy Dendridge was nominated in 55 for an Oscar, then Sidney Potier won nine years afterwards. I thought we've passed this phase long ago, and you still have institutions like the Golden Globe. I no, mean, the Academy Award is also not very good, I have yeah. to say. Uh, but the, uh, the but at least they're the yeah. 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 Hollywood Foreign yeah. Press Association, really, oh no, they behaved accordingly. Well, good readers. Many, many in the industry would like the uh, Globes disappear. Oh, yeah. Yes. After the 79 uh, Golden Globes uh, this year. But whether that will happen or not will, remains to be seen. Last year, when there was that strident criticism of the lack of diversity, they tried to include, you know, to reorganize the 87 member uh, board. And uh, six uh, blacks made it to it. Uh, ten women, uh, you know, uh, suddenly showed up, and five uh, Latinos. But apparently, uh, no, they, you know, the people are not pleased yet. But the bigger issue is about the corruption. Yes. The ethical issues, you know, particularly with regard to IRS uh, yes. uh, filings and uh, members of the Hollywood uh, Foreign Press uh, Association, the H HFPA, sitting on about $62 uh, million uh, uh, dollars that they, they don't always uh, account for. And then, of course, you know, all these issues uh, will not go away. You'll find uh, people like Tom Cruise, as you have mentioned, like Scarlett Johansson, turning their back, even Netflix, even yes. the other networks, you know, they don't want Amazon. to, uh, mm -hmm. yes, they don't want to uh, provide the necessary support. But the bigger issue is what has happened to the award season uh, in the United States because of- Because of COVID. COVID, Absolutely. because of Omicron. Absolutely. You know, and you find that many of these events have either been canceled, you know, including the Oscars, the Grammy Awards, the New York uh, Film Critics uh, Circle Award, you know, and in that industry, you know, we've seen very serious impact of uh, the chaos that has been created uh, by rising cases of uh, uh, case positivity right. with regard to uh, COVID-19. But the Golden Globe is in a class of its own. Before now, they had said, oh, the event, you know, you must have taken a booster jab, uh, you must have been, uh, you know, you must show your COVID certificate. But as it is, you know, the event is not even going to happen physically. And all that, well, it's already done. all that, it's uh, done today. It was yes, announced today. all that, uh, you're laughing, yeah. you know, that I'm um, partying, yes. uh, drinking, uh, yes, Those that characterizes, yeah. you know, Amazing. nobody will have Absolutely. that opportunity and this I, and year. And I think that the Daily Mail put it right. They said the party is over for the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's begin what's trending. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar on Sunday lent his voice to the security challenges facing the nation in a post shared on his social media handles. The Vice President said, Security should be beefed up to avoid the wastage of lives. Atiku was reacting to the massacre of at least 200 residents of Zamfara State on the 6th of January. He described the killings as senseless and heartbreaking. Let's take a reaction from his uh, post on Twitter from uh, Clement, who wrote, When it happens between two countries, do we have these numbers as victims? This is war. And somebody is talking about rehabilitating those terrorists. We need to declare war against these invaders. Are we not at war? Why these numbers? Really, why these numbers? We are, we are reporting at least 200 victims. I believe that even the, during the mass burial that occurred um, over the weekend, they were even reporting that more than 200 bodies were buried. 10,000 people displaced. Really horrific situation that happened uh, in Zamfara State. We are at war. We are, but I don't think anybody is sort of pandering to the bandits at this point. If yes. you recall um, the president, well, President Buhari's statement, he really did read the riot act. Yes. But the problem is that we've heard that before. He is utterly outraged by just the senseless carnage, just the monstrous crime. Did you hear how those, they just went and shot anybody that they saw for no reason. Massacre. Yes. And you know, and there's still some people trying to downplay it. You'll recall there's some people arguing about the numbers. Mm -hmm. That's hardly the point. The point is that this horrific incident did happen and it must be addressed. But you see the president talking about how the, this, uh, it's an act of desperation. Yes, his statement strikes the right tone in terms of the seriousness of the incident. 
But we've heard statements before, haven't we, sure. that have struck the right tone. It doesn't materialize into results. I mean, Zamfara cannot catch a break. It's beyond ridiculous at this point. What we need is action. What we need is results and to put an end to this kind of really immeasurably awful crimes that are becoming just quotidian. We sit here constantly talking about the same thing. I'm never going to get tired of it. Dr. Abati. Well, first, let's sympathize with the affected families and the people of Zamfara State. Uh, this is in itself a clear indication of how bad the situation in Nigeria is. Only last week we were commending the Nigerian Air Force for being able to take out yes. two of the leaders of the bandits, now known as a terrorist. And we understand that in this particular case, uh, you know, the military, they were given the chase to a guy called Belo Tuji and his men, who were also, you know, his leader of uh, another group. And they were fleeing from uh, Bukuyum to anchor uh, local government area of Zamfara State. And in the process, they started killing people along the way. They were setting houses on fire. I mean, in a massacre, really. Somebody referred to it as the Zamfara massacre. Even if it was only two, three persons that were killed, it's unacceptable. And it's unfortunate that this has happened at a time when both the president and the security agencies are saying uh, they are making significant progress with regard to the security situation uh, in that uh, axis of the country. What we have seen here is that, look, these uh, uh, terrorists, you know, they will stop at nothing. Uh, it will look like uh, they were trying to uh, just show their, you know, some kind of reprisal, you know, uh, killing. Yeah, but that should not discourage government. That should not discourage the military or other security agencies that are involved. Because what we have seen is that we're dealing with people who just don't care and who will kill, who will maim, who will destroy. And if it requires a change of strategy or tactics, I think that the uh, military forces should not be discouraged. So, commiserations to the lives lost. Only God knows how many families have been damaged as a result of this. But we're dealing, we're fighting a war and we're dealing with a multi faceted problem. At first, yes, we'll shoot all the guns, we'll decimate, but have you ever thought for once that when all of this started, we're mentioning the killings of Muhammad Yusuf, but he morphed into Shekau. Then from Shekau, we have Belo Tuji, and we have a couple of other people. Have you ever wondered for once the system that produced the likes of Shekau the Belo Tujis of this world and the other bandits? I'll tell you the system. It is a system of impoverishment of young children in the northern part of the country. You cannot remove it from systems like the Almagiri system. So, we are fighting this war, and I know we will win. We will do well. We're supporting our soldiers. But the truth is, once you still have a system that impoverishes a lot of people and open them up to crimes, then there are many Belo Tujis of the future that are still 10 year old today. So the multi pronged approach will be fix that area, ensure people go to school, take children off the streets, get them busy, assure their future, invest in education, healthcare, and some other areas. Then, secondly, the guys on ground. Mop them up. Take the fight to them. I'm happy we're free to use the Super Tucano now. Fight! Chitty chitty. Bang bang! Yeah. That area. We need to bring this to an end once and for all and restore the livelihood of the people. But in doing this, if we do not do something about the economy, then there are many 10 year olds that are hungry that if you give them a gun, they will shoot for just 10 naira akara. That is so chilling. So chilling. But it's true. Mm. It is. So sad. Let's take another story with this uh, video of a woman named Miriam Abubakar, who confessed over the weekend to luring young girls, including her own daughters and nieces, to terrorists for sexual pleasure in Kaduna State. Let's take a look at this video before we come back for a discussion. She said her name is Maria Abubakar. She's 39 years. She's married and her husband is at home. The reason for her arrest is that she she, is, she has a, a relationship with a kidnapper that he has since uh, left home and lives in the forest of Galadimawa. 
that he approached her and asked her to get him a girlfriend. Okay, she has a boyfriend among the kidnappers who is called Isa. She has visited them in the forest camp uh, at least four times. She assists them to run errands. One of them's wife put to bed. She was the one who attended the naming ceremony. Like you said, Rufai, it's the system. It's an this, ecosystem. Ma this woman, I believe they paid her even just 20,000 naira That's or something what we're like saying. that for this atrocity. There's an ecosystem. And how does this ecosystem thrive? There is poverty, there is squalor, there is everything. See, after the, the Second World War, I think it was, somebody wrote a book. I forget his name now. It was a top labor, labor politician in the UK. Uh, William Beveridge was his name, and he called the book Five Giants. And he advised Britain then that if you don't solve the problem of these five giants, then the country called Britain will disintegrate. He talked about squalor, he talked about poverty, he talked about sanitation, he talked about health. So see, like William Beveridge is right then, there are five giants for the problem of Nigeria. And if we don't solve it, ecosystems like this will thrive. And for less than 20,000 naira, People will traffic girls to terrorists 20, to get sexual Naira. pleasure. Can you believe this, uh, uh, Tundu Abiola? <laughs> I am actually quite speechless. Her own daughters, yeah. too. Oh, yeah. I'm stunned. We've had a guest on this show talking about how these bandits live in the bush, but they have to come out when they need to buy food and mm. to get supplies. Are there people who actually you know, know them and consult with them? And there is this banditry ecosystem that's thriving. But I never thought that we would have this. I mean, you mentioned World War II, so you have, you recall, with Japan, mm -hmm. the women who were trafficked to soldiers, mm. that they're still demanding restitution till today. Their lives were completely shattered. They were mm. sold into sexual slavery to service soldiers during the war in Japan. And this is what we're doing to our girls here in Nigeria. You know, I feel quite strongly about abuse of mm. children. And I, I'm glad she's been arrested. And there, I'm glad that we have trafficking laws. I believe it's a 2003 law in Nigeria. I need her to be thrown under the jail, quite frankly. She needs to just rot there. Absolutely. It's disgusting. Dr. Martin. Okay, should anybody be surprised? I mean, I, I, although Amita Izione has argued in one of his books that poverty cannot be used as an excuse no, no, for every not. social ill, because there are communities, there are societies where you have massive poverty, yeah. but th those societies have not yet lost their moral center. But in our case, yes, poverty is one of those social conditions that we talk about. And he's here uh, confronting us. We have uh, a Mrs. Warren of uh, providing services uh, for the uh, terrorists in the, uh, the northern part of the, of the country. And the sheer inhumanity of it, you know, makes it even more, you know, uh, embarrassing that this is the case. And this particular lady that was shown in her video, she's not alone. There are others, you know, that are involved, mothers selling their daughters, or even, you know, pimping, you know, providing uh, services, even on their own, prostituting you know, to make terrorists uh, happy. And some of these girls that are sent to the terrorists, some of them are not uh, allowed to come back. So what is the next step? Some of them have been apprehended. I think also, you know, the full rot of the law should, uh, you know, apply. Uh, the women, uh, the Madam Warrens that have been arrested, should also assist the authorities yes. for them to investigate, to know how, you know, this particular ecosystem works. Because it's not enough to just parade you know, the women, and say, oh, these ones are supplying uh, prostitutes uh, to terrorists. How does it work? Some of those prostitutes, or if, I, if we may use that term, who have been there, who were lucky to come back, what do they know? Mm. How can they assist the authorities in, in terms of their investigations? So it's not just about moralizing, it's about seeing, you know, what we can take from this as part of the, uh, you know, of intelligence process in understanding how it works. They're, tra they're trafficked people, mm -hmm. not prostitutes. Okay. They well, didn't have a choice in the matter. Well, yes. whichever. <laughs> All right, then. We shall take our final story. Evangelist Fumilayo Adebayo, nicknamed Mommy Gio on social media, was trending over the weekend after comments she made during an interview she granted BBC Pigeon, in which she claimed most of the controversial videos of her circulating online were edited. The pastor also claimed that she has been preaching for 24 years and was given a mandate by God to warn people against activities that might cause them to go to hell. Well, in this short clip, the pastor says 
the Antichrist, will be introduced through the World Cup. Let's take a look. People on social media, not just me, we have Tega say the same thing. We have some people from Ghana, even many white men, even go on social media, Google, God of Soccer. They will bring it out for you. I'm not the only one talking about it. What about other games? Why didn't I say about them? There are forces, and what I say about it in my testimony now around 90 years in the kingdom of darkness, waiting I talk about it, when I still belong to the other side, waiting we talk about it, why they not publish that one? Why they just want to arouse everybody that loves soccer against me. Why did I say that, that nobody published that one? Because of events that is about to come very soon, that will introduce the Antichrist into the old world. It will come through World Cup. That's all. Are we going to call this woman? Mommy Gio. Yes. That's She's all. She's called Mommy Gio. Yes. Of the Rapture Proclaimer <laughs> Evangelical Church in Ota, Ogun State, Rapek. And uh, she's not just the rapture proclaimer, she's also the gatekeeper of hell. <laughs> she determines who goes to heaven and who goes to hell. And she has spent almost uh, 1,000 years in the kingdom of darkness before she showed up here. And uh, in fact, she says women who use makeup will go to hell. Ah. And that women who wear jewelry will go to hell. Ah. And that, uh, you know, footballers, you know, are bound for hell. However, she provided a caveat that, look, some of those memes that, that we have seen out there, uh, that people are adding to, uh, you know, things she didn't say and all of that. But she, she has said enough that is outrageous and that is chaotic and that is uh, shocking. But the question in all of this is that, look, we've seen that whether in Christianity or in any other religion, there's no standard doctrine. Mm -hmm. And the point I always make is that people should beware. Because mm -hmm. she says, well, uh, more people are coming to our church, which is the part of it that I find shocking. Are, are they going there to go and uh, know how to go to heaven think, and how to avoid hell? Or they are going there for the entertainment, <laughs> you know? So people should, should be careful uh, the kind of teachings that they imbibe. Her name is uh, Fumilayo Adebayo, yes. popularly known as Mommy Gio, and she's uh, very happy about it. And she says she's here, uh, you know, our, our ministry is to prevent people from going to heaven. Well, whether she's been to heaven and back. Prevent people from going to hell. Uh, prevent people from, from going, from going to, to hell. hell yes. And to teach them how to how go to, to go heaven. To heaven yes. And uh, it's difficult to go to heaven because uh, most people don't like what uh, uh, God wants them to do. And uh, the way they don't like it is by uh, wearing wigs, uh, by having uh, wearing jewelry, and by having uh, makeup. Turn on. But with you, you travel, right? <laughs> I was trying to take out my jewelry. Oh, but oh I don't my know gosh. what she has against football and footballers. What is this? And the Antichrist is coming through the World Cup, Rufa. <laughs> you see, the street term for it, they call it Dangbana Shoku. It's a real Dangbana. Um, what does it mean? <laughs> so I cut it. No, that's what it means. Dang the street Dang Banashoku. Mm -hmm. She's a real scam. <laughs> People like this have said it before. Yeah. There's a, you see, there's a level of psychosis going on in society. And they bring that there to the fore by saying they represent God. This woman is a hype person. It's just hype. She, she loves the hype. In the interview, she was even saying people should go to her site and go and watch. Entertainment. She loves the hype. So it's the level of psychosis, yeah. no enough psychologists and everything. But me, I watch her for comic relief. Yes. Anytime I feel stressed. Yes. Just she's like, I think you just try it out. Very good comic try, relief. For, try, you know, she's she a good is. comedian. She will do this, do that. Say, say World Cup, Antichrist, and all of that. That's how she said, uh, if you use a, a certain uh, ATM card, uh, if you use MasterCard, you will go to air fire. I said the Holy Spirit that told her didn't even forget that there's another card called Visa card. She's not serious. No, she, says, she says she uses MasterCard. She, she uses MasterCard. She, she says she sure. uses MasterCard. The, the, and that people were lying shopping. against her. That, yeah, she oh, said people were lying. Yes. And then she confessed oh. everything she had said. But, 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 but she now talked it up with saying more yes. that the oh, World no. Cup is the Antichrist. Well, no, I she don't, said more than that. Well, oh. can we say in our own case, since she runs a big church, I told her the church is quite, you know, uh, a big one. Uh, can we say, touch not my anointed? Yeah. Which anointed? <laughs> 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 Which anointed? Thank you guys. Okay, for thank you, thank you very much. much. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.